all right guys welcome to my channel so uh, last episode uh, so we are so this was the ritual wow this looks good so we completed one of the objectives now for the other one okay so this is what is going to be a tricky how do i get there Okay, these guys keep talking some... Oh, she has something to say. Jesse, you're back. So did you find anything noteworthy? The original Bureau expedition down here left so much interesting stuff behind. Like their ID cards. I picked up a weird one. It's pretty old. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, I found a few ID cards myself. Or, more accurately, the Rangers found them for me. Are you starting a collection? I'm going for the whole set. I kid, of course. But I suppose they are sort of like baseball cards, except for bureau stuff from the 60s. Hey, the one you found is different than mine. It looks like it's a higher clearance level. A rare one, then. Want to keep it, Emily? Yeah, I absolutely do. But I think you should hang on to it for now. High clearance access might come in handy. Sounds like you have something in mind. Guilty. See, I've been going through Dr. Ash's notes, or the ones I can find, anyway. Like Darling, he seemed to enjoy hiding his most relevant research. From what I gather, there is another floor beneath the warehouse with a special lab that requires five high-level staff members just to access. Here, take this. It's an old skeleton key. Something else the Rangers found. I give them five bucks for every useful trinket they bring me. I'm gonna assume this key is my ticket to that lower floor. And that super secret lab you mentioned. Bingo bango, as Dr. Darling used to say. Well, keep your eyes peeled for more ID cards around the warehouse. If Ash's notes are reliable, and I'm sure they are, then five is the magic number. I think I found three of them, right? Okay, she has more to say. The nail is almost repaired. You really do have a knack for this kind of work. Okay, so... Have you spent any time looking into the crystals growing around here? As if I could resist. The biggest question is where it comes from. A threshold? Or is it native to the Foundation? But if so, why doesn't it grow in the rest of the oldest house? The fact that they return to an earlier state when damaged is severely inconsistent with our reality's adherence to linear time. So either they're A, partially conscious, or B, organic elements that are foreign to and yet influenced by our dimension. The jury's still out. Have you learned anything about the crystals? I have a power that lets me stretch them. Huh. Yep. <laughs> Okay, Marshall. Any idea what Marshall would be doing down here? That information is on a need-to-know basis, Faden. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. But honestly, I never had much interaction with Marshall. She only came to me when she was looking for Darling. But this is Helen Marshall we're talking about, the woman who single-handedly dealt with the Bergen Peak AWE. If she's down here, it's because she needs to be. Well, clearly she couldn't handle this one on her own. Okay, so what's this? Any progress with the nail? Of course. I've been busy with surface analysis. Its composition is remarkably similar to that of material found in the astral plane, but it alters itself between my observations. It's almost as if it doesn't like being examined. So the nail is from the astral plane? Not necessarily. See, if we assume that, we're suddenly facing a lot of new questions. How did something so large get out of the astral plane? How did it get inside the oldest house? Did a threshold bring it in? Did people? Maybe through the motel. Maybe it was always here. Hmm. Doubtful. Okay, I think I should just exit. I'll see you later, Emily. Good luck. Take notes. Yeah, as if we have time for that. Yeah, absolutely zero time for taking notes here. 
I mean, all we are doing uh, is hunting around. Anything here? No. Okay, so. Okay, so she's saying there is a secret lab beneath the warehouse. What does she mean? Okay, so. Okay, this is not look good. There is a place. Don't be a stranger. Okay, so there is a place that I can access. I think that is what goes there, okay? This is a very dangerous place. Yeah, oh no. Is there anything I can do? No. Oh, we have this, right? They are very dangerous. Oh no. Okay. I just Oops. I miss just that. Great. Yeah, I have been to this place, right? Camp. I remember there is a lab you need.
You know what for me. Okay, come here. Help me clear these guys. Okay. Newer. Is it from the upper floors? <laughs> the 
Thank you. Wait, let me get here. I'll surely find a few documents. No? Usually there are a few documents, you know, in these secret areas. I guess not. Complete the ritual in the collapse department. Yo. Something behind that this Oh, what is this return? Data entry and firing. Yeah, I think. Okay, what are these photos? This looks like it. I don't know chimney or something. I don't know scientists. I don't. Know. Huh. So okay, what is this? Let's read this. To whoever finds this, I am containment process designer JN Gibbs and I am writing this document. This to document the largest building shift to ever occur. Here are the facts. A considerably large section of the containment sector including the process and protocols officers of research facilities and a fair chunk of the fire break has been yanked down to a chasmin that reaches far below lobby level I think. It was a violent shift and I regret to report several casualties. Injuries were sustained by all but many of us including myself sorry myself included are still mobile. We have set up a base camp and started triaging. There are little supplies. We explored our surroundings and found caverns all of all things. Maybe we are in some kind of cave threshold, like the quarry. Wherever we are, we are not the first. There were some rusty power cores, old lights, signs, infrastructure. What was this area used for? Why did they seal it off? Why have we never heard of it? More importantly, how are we going to get out? Okay. So there are a lot of stuff that I have to still read. Okay. Mm. Mm. Oh wait, let me call a ranger first. Director Faden here. Send back up to my location. Oh. Let's do this! Oh my god, he scared me. Oh I was about to shoot him. Oh my god. Okay. This. okay. Event summary. A series of reverberating sounds observed in downtown cave with no clear point of origin. The event was witnessed by the city's general public. Mental and physical symptoms were reported including aphasia, sleep paralysis and excess dash in the reported individuals. Event response due to the brief nature of the event overseas bureau agents were not able to respond while it was active. Immediately upon arrival agents collected audio recordings taken by local witnesses. All bureau monitoring stations located at global junctions of acoustic amplification were directed to monitor any auditory events of similar pitch, wavelength, and duration in an effort to trace echoes or epicenters. In the following week, similar cases were reported from both various amateur sources and bureau stations in major cities across the globe. The subsequent events diminished in volume and frequency per each occurrence. Event is being to be generated by planar friction 
though this is not confirmed okay Yeah, don't scare the shit. Okay, let me save. Okay, let's go. Cause I know it's going to be dirty, dude. This is gonna be a really tough fight. I can. Oh, I knew it. Let me take him, take him, take him, take him. Take it, you take it, yes. Yes. What is this? This is a personal mod. Okay, wait.
Someone call a plumber. Thought no one was around to hear that. Dear House of Representatives, my husband Francis read, read an article before he died about how the universe was really just a computer program. He believed it. I thought it sounded silly, but now I think he was right. Francis was hit by a car a few months ago, a drunk driver. I don't think it was supposed to happen. My neighbor's son Jeremy broke off one of our windows with a football a week before Francis died. Francis yelled at Jeremy for it. He was a bit harsh. This is important because I see Jeremy on his computer through their living room window. He's on it all the time. His mother says he's a computer whiz. I think Jeremy is operating the computer program and he changed the universe so that driver would hit Francis. He did it to get back at Francis for yelling at him. Is there a way to change the computer and make Francis come back? I have some money or if it's expensive. I don't know how these things work. I don't care if Jeremy gets in trouble or not. I just want Francis to come home. Francis I I, and I were very happy together. I can feel him not being here and I know it's not right. Sincerely, Stephanie Miller. What the hell is happening here? What do you want me to do? Oh, come on. Okay. You're listening to America Overnight, now in its 29th year. Or is it? That music, I don't like it. Don't worry. 
Tonight, we're discussing thrift store oddities and one-of-a-kind finds. Peggy's on the line from Biloxi. She and her husband found a beautiful Himalayan salt lamp at a garage sale. Tell us about it, Peggy. I heard of salt lamps, you know. Those glowing rocks you plug in. They're supposed to release negative ions. Clear the air? I got one. Only four bucks. And I put it in our living room. I thought it would look nice there. It gives the whole room this lovely orange glow. Now, this is usually when the call takes a turn. It's my husband. When he's in the living room, he won't take his eyes off the lamp. He's obsessed with it. If I turn it off, he gets so upset. He says it needs to stay on, no matter what. Last night, I woke up at 3 a.m. He wasn't in bed. I found him in the living room, staring at the lamp. He was smiling. His eyes were open, but I thought he might be sleepwalking. So I shook him. He just kept smiling at the light. Then... Started to speak. He said, every time a reflection reflects itself, it gets a little greener. I read that. And then he turned to me. He was still smiling, eyes open. My husband's eyes are brown, almost black. But the eyes of the man in the living room last night, his eyes were green. Peggy, I'm so sorry to cut you off there, but we need to go to commercial. I'd like you to stay on the line, though. My producer, Karen, needs a little more information. Okay? Uh, okay. America Overnight, we'll be right back. Hmm, I would have missed that. Is there anything else that I may have missed, possibly? No? direction I think I cannot go there should have been able to go there but okay I like this entire concept you know such an interesting way of presenting a game hmm. I miss that stuff there but I cannot help it you know Okay, we have a save point here. Great. Okay, we have no abilities. Let's open this. You're listening to America Overnight, a beacon in the darkest recesses of possibility for more than 29 years. We have another letter from a listener. This one's unsigned but postmarked from Toledo. It says, Dear America Overnight, 
I have the most wonderful appliance for your listeners. It is a miracle of God. A fondue set. A fountain. A blessed gift. Blessed is spelled with a capital B. Hmm. Go on, they write. Dive on in. It is molten hot. Perfect for meat. No signature. As far as I know, no fondue set was sent to us here at the studio. Just this letter. Wait. I think there's something else in the envelope. Some kind of black powder with white shards in it? Bone, maybe? Karen. Who is this? Karen? We're on the air, Karen. Where are you? What? What's this powder in the booth? Is this... Is this ash? Oh. Oh, God. Karen? How do I cut the commercial? Yeah, that looks like... Mm, I don't like it, actually. There was this one more. What is this? I'm a refund. I don't know. I don't know about refund. Okay, we have a shelter here. Let's open this. for a big problem right I know this okay let's see Gibbs reporting in it has been eight days since the collapse and still no sign of any rescue efforts the bureau is either completely unaware of our situation or are incapable of helping us or maybe it's intentional how many times have we seen the bureau not give two shits about its own hard-working staff when they go missing in, the, in this place how many times did they let it slide thinking oh at least it wasn't me too many, I am ashamed to admit. Anyway, there have been some developments. Strange crystals have been have begun growing through the walls. They seem to block some corridors, but not others. The path to the caves is always left open, but we are not so we are not sure why. Luckily, the crystals keep out the astral spike. Once been hounding us for days. John, Nikolai, and Sarah went to try and find a radio, but never came back. We think the spike got them. I think it's hunting us. Dog says spikes only exist in the astral plane. So what the F is it doing here? If we get out of here, I'm hiring a lawyer. These are unsuitable working conditions. Wow. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is not gonna be a good news here. As soon as I open this, this is going to be a death one. Let's see what is the transit control. Okay, something serious is behind that door for which I have no access. Mm. I don't like this. This looks way too serious. Mm. No power. Typical. Wait a minute, that's the projector. So that's the altered item. Looks pretty secure. Hmm. Okay. I should hire someone who built smaller machines. Well, 
Liberation Hall. Okay, I think I know what we have to do. So I think I'm gonna quit here. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to my channel, like this video. And yeah, I will see you next time. Till then, goodbye, take care and peace out.